Welcome to section 2 of our course. In this section, we'll discuss how to build Go applications that can interact with databases. In this section, we'll cover how Go interacts with some of the most popular database technologies in the software industry. We'll cover MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite. We'll cover ORM layers where we learn new ways to interact with the database. Then we'll cover some NoSQL technologies like MongoDB and InfluxDB. In this video, we'll discuss MySQL and how to build Go applications around it. In this video, we'll start by covering the GoSQL interface, which is a very important interface in Go standard library, which is supported by most Go database drivers out there, especially SQL drivers. So let's talk a little bit about MySQL. MySQL is a very popular database in modern software. It's a relational SQL database that has an open source core and have been around for a very long time. Currently MySQL is owned by Oracle as shown here, but there is a pure open source implementation of it called MariaDB, which was basically uh, developed by the same developers who uh, developed the original MySQL engine. MySQL is used in Facebook, uh, YouTube, and a lot of popular organizations. Learning MySQL is always a very desirable skill wherever you are. If you don't already have MySQL installed in your uh, system, you can just download it from either uh, the MariaDB website or you can uh, download it from uh, the MySQL website. So you can see here the commercial edition and in here you find the community edition which you can use for testing and experimentation. Same here, you can just download it. So one of my favorite tools to uh, work with MySQL is the MySQL Workbench software. So it's a MySQL client that allows you to uh, see your tables, add items, create tables, and pretty much anything you need to do uh, in a database. So to access uh, the MySQL Workbench website, you go to mysql.com forward slash products forward slash workbench. And in here you find the download option. You can see here that it's supported in Windows, Linux, and OS X. So now that we have MySQL installed, as well as the MySQL Workbench client, um, we can connect to our local instance of MySQL and then I can create a new schema for uh, this course and let's call it uh, Dino. Then apply and this will create the schema. Apply, success and we can see Dino now. So Dino is an empty schema so no tables are currently uh, there. So let's create a new table and let's call it animals. And let's say this table will store a list of the dinosaurs that we have in our zoo. So the first column we would need would be the ID column. So MySQL Bench uh, helpfully generated the column name for us. So this would be our primary key. It should not be null and it needs to auto increment. You can see here the same properties um, in their full wording. Now next we need to have an animal type column. So the animal type column will basically just be a string. Let's mark it as uh, not null. This is where uh, the type of the animal will be stored. Actually, let's go back to the ID uh, column and just call it ID. 
Now, next thing we need to uh, add is a nickname for each one of the of the animals. We assume here that each one of the dinosaurs in the zoo would have a unique nickname. So let's make this unique as well. Next, we need to specify the location of that animal. So for the location, uh, let's pick an end type. Let's assume that, um, actually, instead of location, let's just call it uh, zone. So let's assume that we have different zones in our dino zoo, and each zone has a number. And this is how we figure out the location of each animal. Uh, last thing I would like to add is the age. Each one of the animals we store in this database. So now we have a reasonable table detailing some important details about the animals we have in our zoo. The next thing we do is to hit apply so that we save uh, these changes and we see here the query that uh, our MySQL Workbench client is about to uh, execute and in this query we see here that we are about to create a table inside the Dino Schema the table is called Animals and we see here the different column names that we specified and that the primary key is ID so I just hit apply and it's there so now we have an animal stable perfect the table is currently empty though so let's add some data to it so I wrote a quick insert query here that would add uh, two rows to the table. Uh, let's put this at the next line so that we can see it. Uh, so the first row will host a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex with nickname Rex, who will live in zone one with H10. The second row will host a raptor nicknamed Raptor, hosted in zone two. Since raptors live in packs, we will probably have multiple raptors in zone two. Um, we still need to add some fixes to the uh, insert statement. So first thing we need to do is to add the table name. And I don't need to declare the ID in here since we're not using it. So if I try to run this now, succeeds and now if I run the select statement we see the two rows so we now have some data we can play with now to make this more interesting uh, let's add another raptor to our zoo this time we can call it Milo and it should exist with uh, the same zone as the other raptor. Let's say Zill is a little bit younger than raptor. Apply this. So this will insert it to us. So apply. And we now have Velo added to our zoo. Now before we start writing some code, uh, let's explore the package in Go that we will need to use in order to interact with a relational database. So in here, I am in the golang.org website. Then from there, we can move to packages and we can find here a database for slash SQL package. So database for slash SQL. And basically this package is mostly what we need to use when interfacing with a relational database. Now this package is a little bit different than a typical Go package. This package is not designed to be used alone. It's rather a generic interface around SQL or SQL-like databases. So basically the code inside this package is a bunch of interfaces. 
This package must be used in conjunction with a database driver, which is what we'll be doing in this video. So you need to import this package as well as a database driver that represents the relational database type you're trying to connect to, or the SQL database type you're trying to connect to. So we can actually see a list of available SQL drivers in here. If I go there, so you can find all sorts of SQL drivers here, and even SQL-like drivers in this list. For MySQL, you can find two options here. And you can see here that in case of uh, MySQL, the drivers have passed a compatibility test designed for testing the compatibility with the SQL package. So again, in this video, we'll be using uh, a MySQL driver. Then in future videos, we'll check the SQLite drivers as well as uh, Postgres drivers. Now going back to the package, uh, let's gain a basic understanding of how to use it. So once we import this package, combined with uh, our driver package, the first thing we need to do is open a connection to the database. To do this, we need to call the open uh, function, which will take a driver name of, as the first argument. The driver name is basically the name of the, the SQL-like database driver you're attempting to use. So if you're using or if you're trying to uh, interact with a MySQL database, the driver name will be MySQL. So the driver name is typically defined inside the specific driver package uh, that makes use of the uh, SQL package. For example, if we look at the MySQL driver, we can see here how to import the two packages. And then we see here when we call SQL.open, which was a function we were just discussing, the first argument we pass is MySQL. The second argument we pass is the data source name, or basically the connection string we need to use in order to access a certain database. So if I go back to the MySQL example, you see here a typical MySQL data source name, which is basically your username, your password, and your database name. It's important to note here that open does not necessarily opens a connection to the database, does not create a connection to the database, but it rather provides a go database object that we can use later in our code. If we want to verify the data source name is valid, we need to call ping after we uh, call open. In most cases, you would call open and then you just start uh, using the DB object to uh, issue your SQL queries. And then if there are any issues with a connection, it will let you know. The DB object is very important because it's safe for concurrent use by multiple Go routines. So we don't have to worry about protecting it if it's being used concurrently. And it maintains its own pool of idle connections. That is why it's advised to use the open uh, function only once in your program for a specific uh, database connection. So in order to get a database object per uh, database connection. And then you can use this database object for any other operations that interact with this particular database. Now, before we move on from this point, it's important to explain why we import uh, the actual uh, database driver with the underscore. This is a trick in Go to only initiate the init function of this package. So the init function is basically 
a function that you can write in your package and is understood by Go as a piece of code that needs to be executed whenever your package is loaded. So basically when we import a package using this syntax, we're telling Go that we only want to load this package and in effect only run the init function of this package. So what does the init package do in the database driver? In order to find out, why don't we just go and look at the code? Right here. So this is the init function for the MySQL package. And in here we see a single line of code. This single line of code is how a database driver in Go can register itself to the GoSQL package. The MySQL driver here is basically a data type defined here, which implements all the methods of the SQL package interface. So when you call SQL.register and then use a string as your first argument, as well as a type as your second argument, you're telling uh, the Go SQL package, the standard SQL package in Go, to register this driver as this name. And that is why, if I go back here, we can call open with that name. So that's how we defined it. Now by doing this, and by importing this package, we basically registered it under this name and in effect gave the power to this object to call any of the Go database SQL package uh, methods that are then implemented by the MySQL driver package. Perfect. Now this covers the key concept of SQL drivers in the Go language. Now it's time to see some code to explore how we read data as well as update or create new data. The first thing we need to do in order to use a third party package in Go is to use go get, assuming that the package is properly installed in a source control repository, which most often than not, that would be the case. So get is a command that belongs to the go tool. Uh, go get can go to a repository like github.com and retrieve uh, the requested package, then place it in go path, the go path defined in your uh, development environment. So let's start with that. So in Visual Studio Code, uh, I went and chose a terminal in order to get access to a terminal. Then I pasted uh, the go get command, which points to the MySQL package. So if I hit enter, if I don't get any errors, then that means that uh, my command was a success. 